What is up, fellas? Back game 15. Miami Heat versus the New York Knicks. Two of eight. Go ahead and get it. Have a really good. New York City, baby. I'll be honest. I'm pretty excited. Mama, Pop, Cece. Yeah, they're going to be there. Playing in front of them in the NBA uniform for the first time is going to be a special moment for me. Now, I know all of Harlem is going to be watching. No pressure, right? It's all good, though. I've been waiting for this my entire life. And now be ready. The first NBA game was terrible. We didn't play much in the first half, didn't play at all in the second half. We scored any. But here we are. We're playing against the Knicks, baby. Let's go. On the road, looking for a win against an Eastern Conference rival. The Miami Heat are ready to get this thing started. Bringing you another edition of the NBA on 2K Sports. This is Kevin Harlan. Joining me, Clark Kellogg, Greg Anthony, and courtside Doris Burke. The Knicks happy to return to New York after the road trip. This is a team showing a better record this year. Over last, this was their goal, and it's coming to fruition so far. It's go time now. These are two teams whose rivalry goes way back, and anytime they renew it, the fans, as well as all that are involved, are going to be in for a treat. I like that. Go time. That's a good way to put it. I mean, this will be a testy encounter between these two. The buildup to the game has been extremely intense. I think everybody expecting some kind of violence. Langston Galloway is my guy I'm guarding. We got it. And a new group in for the Heat. Amari Stoudemire is checked in for Whiteside. Winslow comes in for Lou Aldang. Green is in for Dwayne Wade. And Freak subbed in for Goran Dragic. On the floor for Miami, Freak in at point guard. Winslow is out there with Chris Bosch. And it's Stoudemire. And it's Green in at the shooting guard. Here's Anthony. Tanked in off the glass. Anthony's got five now. And I tell you what, anytime you get those easy ones, that basket starts to get bigger. You know, for Carmelo last season, it was Murphy's Law. What could go wrong did go wrong. After signing Melo to a max deal, the Knicks management expected a bunch from him. But with the new offense and a bad knee, it didn't happen. On the wing of Flello. Six on the shot clock. Green against Anthony. Miami grabs the miss. They put up a nice win against Detroit the last time out. Let's go, let's go. That was on display from three-point range in that game. They were lethal. Yeah, splashing those threes as they did really a lot. stay balanced, bro. Deflate that crowd and keep them at bay. Boy, that was a nice road win for him, no doubt. Nobody even close to him, and he can't believe he doesn't knock it down. Ring shot on the way, and it's freak missing. Fuck, dude. Not sure what he was thinking about on that shot. That is not high IQ basketball. Not at all. I mean, he shouldn't even have considered taking that shot. Just a poor, poor choice there. Anthony, the pass to Williams. A jump hook. Shot is good off the back rim and in. Williams has got his first two points of the night. Purely from a size standpoint, that is a mismatch that's going to be hard to overcome defensively. Freak kicks to Stoudemire, and that's out of bounds. Miami will retain possession. And really no choice but to lunge for that pass to make sure it didn't get through. Yeah, and that was important. Probably would have been a quick two points if he doesn't get a hand on it and knock it out of bounds. The Knicks making a switch here. O'Quinn's checked in. And Miami with a change here, too. Anderson's checked in. On the wing of Flello. The dish now to O'Quinn. Feeds it to Williams. There's the screen. Here's a Flello. Can't tie it up as that one misses. And it's the Heat on the break. From deep green. It's good. Yeah. 
Nice. The offense coming. The first quarter, we're up five. Only got a basket. And some tough times for the Knicks, but you listen to Carmelo Anthony, it's clear he's invested. They pulled all the strings to get me here, and I wanted to be here. And yeah, I want New York to be that place where guys want to come play in New York, you know, and I want to retire in New York. I mean, let's just be quite frank. Knicks fans rooting for Carmelo to help make New York Believe a playoff him. venue once again. And you know what? It's going to take a lot. Checked in for All right. Lopez. Coming Jones in again. In Up seven. In for Try not to force any shots. Just stay calm. Pass the ball when we need to. Shoot when you're open. Porzingis is out there with Amundsen, and it's Calderon in at the one spot. So that's who's on the floor for the Knicks. And that's a huge play. I mean, they need more like it because second chance points are going to be key in this game. Mm -hmm, probably so. That's usually a crucial element to any comeback. Yeah, and if you look at it, had they been converting those second chances all along Stick instead of waiting until now, who knows? Let's it fly from 18. And a big pounce off the roof. Sinks right in. Freaks got the wasn't an easy second basket, dude. That's for sure. Pass to Galloway. Anthony on the wing. And we're now a little over two and a half minutes into the second quarter. And stolen by Whiteside. Passes it to Wade. The kick out to Dang. Launches it. They get it back. Misses the one-handed jam. You rarely see him missing dunk, but the defender was right in his face on that one, and it threw him off just enough. And his presence as a scorer, it, it just has a calming effect for the rest of the team. He's a fallback option whenever they need one. One thing about Jose Calderon, you could see the frustration in him last season playing a career-low 42 games. And his Dang, dude. Pretty much need to figure out a way to... Of our shooting. The Knicks' point guard position, but following a preseason calf injury, you know, he missed the team's first 13 games and, and never was able to really get going. Remember, coming into a new system where he had to learn how to play differently. And then after all that, you know, you have to show. That was a terrible shot. I'm surprised that went in. Seriously, dude, I was. He's going to leave somebody in his way. There's a good screen. Pass to Persingas. And that one is hammered home. Is it my guy, Bosch? I can't guard a seven-foot guy. I mean, that was how he got to the hoop. It was the classic screenplay. It won't show up in the box score, but that screen deserves an assist. Absolutely, Kevin. I mean, that took the defender right out of the play. Catching up on the changes for New York, Kevin Serafin is checked in for Persingas. And it's a flawless in for Jose Calderon. Raheed also changing it up. Stoudemire's checked in for Whiteside. Winslow comes in for Lou Aldang. And it's Gerald Green in for Dwayne Wade. Serafin kicks to Galloway. Just five to shoot. There's the three. The shot goes in. First of the night. Oh, that was a lame dude. Jose Calderon, he's been an extremely efficient shooter for a point guard, 48% from the field throughout his career. But last season, he couldn't hit it at all. I mean, he dropped down to 41%. Oh, my gosh, dude. Can't shoot the three. Seraphim dishes to Anthony. That's short off the rim. The Heat with the lead. There's Freak. Miami no good on that time either. Not a whole lot going down for him at this point. He just can't buy a break. Outside Anthony. From past the arc. That's good. And so Galloway with the assist. And that's 12 points for Carmelo Anthony. It seems that every pass they make is leading to a score here. I mean, that's just exquisite ball movement. And that's because the ball is looking for the best the shot. Ball. And it's really it paid off for them. During the run. The drive by Green. 
The pump fake kept the D off balance and gave him room. Green's got five now. He's got to be a little embarrassed for joining the paratroopers club on that pump fake. Anthony with it. He picked up 33 points in their last win against Orlando. <laughs> Kevin, a remarkable night for him. Passing He's going to shoot it. As well. He did a great job racking up the assist. Well, we're up at half. We got six points and a rebound. Let's check. We'll be able to see here in the second half if we're playing. And it's been a back and forth game so far with no brown. A different look for you. Kevin Zerfin, he's checked in. 32 seconds left in the fourth quarter, and we're up by 10. That's we're playing in the second half. And a new group in for the heat. Stoudemire comes in for Chris Bosch. Winslow's checked in for Lou Aldang. And Freak subbed in for Goran Dragic. On the court for the Heat. Freak, he's in a point guard. Chris Anderson out there with Stoudemire. Then it's Winslow, and it's Wade in at the shooting guard position. Here's O'Quinn off target with that shot. And so Miami takes this one. Chris, tell us a little bit about the 2K Sports Post Game Show. Welcome back, everybody. Ernie Johnson here along with Shaq and the Jet as we present our Jordan player of the game, Goran Dragic. He's not always known to make the big headlines or get a lot of media attention, but he... And, folks, that's it for us. Thank you for tuning in. Always a pleasure. Was the game, fellas. Didn't get to play much in the second half again. We'll go ahead and check who our next opponent is. And the situation. And then we'll call it an episode. Oh, hold up, we got a little thing. What a life, eh, freak? One minute you're playing 21 and horse on the courts in Harlem, and the next moment you're in the showroom, configuring the gunmetal and graphite exterior of your luxury car and your iPad mini. <laughs> oh, I bet you get a crazy crowd when you drive that car around the block in the old neighborhood, huh? Yeah, living the dream. <laughs> Mad pandemonium. But folks from back around the way are real proud of me. Yeah, I hear you. Local kid makes good. You know, it kind of reminds me of when I took my tech stock public and I rang the New York Stock Exchange bell and my mom's friends called her up and said, Maggie, is that your son on Bloomberg News this morning ringing the bell? And my mom says, yes, sir, Bob, it was him. That was a great moment, Freak. And you know, our lives are like a pearl necklace of great moments, all strung together with the finest silk thread of memories. And we have to be very careful how we cultivate those pearls and thread that necklace. Does this meeting by any chance have to do with Vic Van Leer? I grew up in the burbs, freak. I wasn't poor, upper middle class, comfortable. My daddy worked as an accountant for one of the largest insurance firms in the country. Smart with his money. Mom didn't have to work. I went to boarding school. And then my dad died of a heart attack when I was a freshman at MIT. I was a movie geek, wanted to be a civil engineer, but I made my fortune by becoming a hybrid of both those interests. My dad didn't want me to be an accountant. <laughs> oh, listen to this. My best friend was a guy named Isidore. <laughs> yeah, we called him Izzy. He was one of the smartest human beings I have ever met in my life. I mean, Izzy was taking second year college calculus courses as a high school sophomore, right? Straight A student, full ride to MIT. Izzy had the world at his fingertips. But he was always looking for trouble, and trouble found him. He ran with the wrong crowd. And when we got to MIT, he got this great job working for a financial consulting firm in Boston. Mm -hmm. 
But every weekend, he would whew, fly to Vegas. For, you see, Izzy had a system for counting cards in Vegas that had the big casinos on the strip. Oh, stymied. He would come back to MIT with suitcases filled with $200,000 in cold cash. What? Yeah. So your man Izzy was getting hit off like that? Like a fat rat in a cheddar cheese factory, freak. <sighs> okay, so what happened to this dude Izzy? Because he's dope. No, <laughs> not dope. Dead. After he'd been missing for three weeks, the Nevada State Police never found hide nor hair. Of Isidore. And our Damn. friendship took a hit when he asked me to hang out with him in Vegas. And I said I wouldn't do it. Because I knew he was on a dark and twisted path in his life. And yes, yes, he was my dude. But no way was I going to throw my life away trying to show my loyalty to a guy who really and truly didn't understand what loyalty was all about. So this meeting is about Vic. Correctamente. Okay, well, sir, Vic isn't Izzy. And why is that, freak? Well, for one thing, you and your dead friend Izzy didn't grow up poor. Me and Vic grew up in a neighborhood where we had to look over our shoulder every two seconds to make sure nobody was going to walk up on us and rob us. True. Izzy and I did not grow up in the hood. But we, like you, thankfully grew up in a two-parent household. But even that wasn't enough for Izzy. He wasn't satisfied. He was always looking for a five-alarm fire when he already had the warmth and comfort of a loving family. This is not about class warfare, freak. This is about the consequences of making bad choices and risking it all when you feel like you have nothing to lose. Vic is like a brother to me, sir. But you shouldn't be Brother Vic's keeper, freak. Would a brother go looking for trouble and put your career and your livelihood at risk by getting into fights at nightclubs and seedy after-hour joints and then scream to the media, oh, it's all good, I'm an F.O.F., friend of freak. It's all misunderstanding. Y'all be haters, don't hate my game. I don't think a brother would do that to someone they really cared about, but a guy who looked at you like a meal ticket would. No. So you don't understand Vic? Really? I don't understand. No. Look, man, it was a misunderstanding with the guy in the next VIP people. His honey started flirting with me. Naturally, I started flirting back. Next thing I know, Captain Cornball's off my grill people. Beefing next to he know. <laughs> he got a two-piece and a biscuit on his left eye. <laughs> hey, nah, nah, I, I don't know who hit him. And he damn sure wasn't me. <laughs> hey, Captain Cornball's mad because I'm an F-O-F, friend of freak. <laughs> hey, well, check this out, though. He needs to train that hottie before he leave the house, though. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> he's... He's hot as ain't loyal, man. <laughs> What's there to understand? Are you freaking blind? You know, I just want to know, how much did you pay your lawyers to make all this go away? Almost 100000 Excuse me, son, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I said I paid almost $100,000. Exactly. And if you keep riding shotgun with Vic, you're going to go broke. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. Vic is my friend, and I grew up with him. How many times I got to tell you, sir? Freak, this is not a request. I am not asking you to do this. I am telling you to do this. And the first order of business is that Mr. Vic Van Leer is banned from traveling with you on the road. Vic is banned from the locker room. And Vic is banned from this arena. And if I catch this guy, Vic, in or anywhere near the facilities, Mr. Vic Van Leer will be arrested for trespassing. Are you serious, sir? Brother. I'm as serious as cancer. We all know that can be deadly. You know, when me and Vic were kids, playing summer tournaments at the Dome, we would always imagine making it to the pros. And after the crowds left, and just a street light was on the court, like 11.30, 12 midnight, even one in the morning sometimes, <laughs> we used to practice player introductions, running on the court, giving dab high-fiving the teammates. Vic 
He would act as an announcer. You know, he would introduce me, announce my name on the loudspeaker and the jumbotron would uh, flash to my image like a little guy dressed in long shorts and a jersey. And now, fresh off his three game, 62 point scoring streak, the youngest player to ever do so in NBA history, frequency vibrations. <laughs> So me and Vic would sit in those empty bleachers at the dome and dream like nobody's business. And now, and now I'm living a dream. For real. And in so many ways, Vic was part of that. Please, listen to me. I mean, I know this guy's your dude from way back. Look. Me and Vic go way back like the front seats of a 67 Cadillac. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's, we go way back. Did you say, did you say front seats? Fr front seats of a 67 Cadillac. We go way back like the front seats of a 67 Cadillac. <laughs> well, do you have any crickets? <laughs> I'm going to be the hit once again at Herbie Allen's Sun Valley Shindig because my fellow billionaires love it when I walk and talk that talk. So that almost sounds... No, let me tell you exactly what it sounds like. I respect, admire, and most importantly, love you as a human being and a role model. But I pay you a lot. And I mean I pay you a lot of money to play for my team. And I am in this game to win it. And you can't win it with an albatross around your neck like Vic. So Vic is done. History. And here's some more lingo that I picked up from a former megastar who used to play for me several seasons ago. Thought I would never release him until I did. And now he's the sixth man on a struggling team in Venice. And yeah, I'm talking Venice with the canals and the gondolas and Harry's Bar, not the street ballers next to the fortune tellers on the beach in Cali. This guy used to tell me when he thought there was a player destroying our team, don't be a hero, cut that zero. And that is what I am telling you about Vic, freak. Don't be a hero, cut that zero. The only thing Vic brings into your life is headache and unwanted and unnecessary negative attention. And it will begin to affect your mindset. And when it affects your mindset, it's going to affect your play. And when it affects your play, it's going to affect my team. And when it affects my team, it's going to affect my money. And if it affects my money, Google Translate will become your new freaking Friend, I want a championship ring, freak, and I want you to help me get that ring. And banners, after banners hanging from the Raptors in this arena. So, freak, hear me clearly and hear me good. V, G, G, Vic, gotta. Go! Handle your business. And remember, that contract you signed contains a morality clause, a very important clause that revolves around your conduct on and off the court and how it can negatively impact my team. Now, I don't want you to have to learn Italian or Croatian as a second language. And hey, playing pro ball overseas, there's nothing wrong with that. But the arenas are nothing like this, nor will the money be the same. And on top of all of that, this is the U.S. of A, the greatest freaking country in the world. Ask yourself, is Vic worth all that? Think about it. Think long, think wrong. Damn, dude. That was intense, bro. He has a bad habit. It's not, and I understand some of his judgments. 
might shadow his actual character. He's not that at all. Man, Vic, let me tell you something. We actually, like, we have love for each other. We're brothers. Blood couldn't make us any closer at all. I mean, he, he has so much um, loyalty to me and to my family. You could see even Cece, you know, has uh, issues with him, but he, just, he still loves us. He still loves us. Damn, dude. What's gonna happen? I don't know. That's freaking intense. I don't like the Miami Heat though either. I do want to ask for a trade, but we'll see. Insane, dude. I'll see you guys next episode. The Cleveland Cavaliers, game 18. Let's get it. <laughs>